just want to make another video about the oil field. Uh, you know, I'm taking these over the road loads and deliberately going through the oil field because I think I'm like a junkie when it comes to that, you know. It could be going somewhere else, but uh, let's run through the oil field to see what's happening there. Eventually, I know that uh, I've got to go back. Um, I've got to stick some trucks in there and see how it works out because I watch it, I've got the oil price thing on my phone, I check it every day, it's up now nudging up to $60 a barrel, which is, uh, yesterday it was the highest that it's been since January of last year before the world uh, pandemic all started out there, so it's going to come, eventually it's coming, within the next two to three weeks. Uh, just the weather, the sunshine, eh, Texas can get some crappy weather with the, the mud and the rain as uh, you've watched some of these other videos that I've put out for last year you know, it's a, it's a special kind of mud, it's like, like freaking glue, sticky glue but with the oil price coming up uh, it'll, I, I believe, I believe that the oil field will get busy because the oil price is coming up. Uh, also with these fracking restrictions, you know, I think it could be like, if they are going to bring them in, um, it could be like the, you know, as the run up to Christmas. There's nothing to stop you doing your Christmas shopping in February right now, you know. Why not? Why wait till the last minute? But this could be, you know, a big push before the restrictions are brought in or they don't do any more leases or whatever you know well it's there let's crank it up on and get it squeezed in as many wells as we can so if that is the case it could be busy that's another reason it could be busy but I just like it down there um, when I'm going through Texas it, it's a, quite a special place anybody that's been there uh, there's a guy on here that comments miles to go nice guy uh, he was down there, finally caved in and admitted that, yeah, there's something about it, you know. There really is. Uh, Texas people are really quite nice. When, when you're in Texas, uh, I do what I do because I'm ambitious, I like a challenge, I like I like trying things out, see if things work. And in Texas, uh, it seems like it's possible, it feels that you could take on the world and win. Uh, I remember when we closed our buses down, being up uh, at Loch Lomond up there, and with the greatest will in the world, uh, I don't think Richard Branson could become his millionaire status, billionaire status, or Donald Trump if they lived at the side of Loch Lomond. Nothing against being up there, it's beautiful, but there's not a lot of opportunity to do things. In Texas, it's the exact opposite side of the spectrum where uh, whatever you want to do, you get the feeling that, hey, you could do it. If I could, you know, go back in time, I'd probably go to Texas 20 years ago or 30 years ago and just see what was happening. I'd have probably made a lot of money and probably lost it, you know, stretching too far or something. Who knows? But I'm older and wiser, as they say. And people might be watching this thinking, if you're that wise, you wouldn't be going to the oil field. But there's just uh, something nice about being in Texas. Things feel possible and when you're down there and the frack is on and it's running good and you're just running flat out different laws for the oil field for the log books as well you can work harder you don't need to reset as long and you can just keep going uh, so with the oil price coming up I've got this truck here in that blue Kenworth those two trucks I think they're built for the oil field you know they're I see people down there with, uh, you know, I don't want, you know, the, I don't want to knock trucks, but these old Peterbilts like this, uh, if you look down the hood, it's riveted together, the panels are riveted on, stuck, solid. Some of these newer trucks, they're put together with glue, you know, they're just, panels are stuck on. I saw a guy beside me the other day, the other wind blow his, blow his fairing off. Um, just, no built the same, whereas these old Kenworths and 
conventional trucks that are built the old style way uh, do well in the oil field. Um, and these are pre emission ones, so the ideal bit of kit for it. The rates are coming up down there. Uh, again, I'm going to run down through Andrews, Texas, and probably take some video footage of what's going on there. Uh, the, 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 there's different people hauling sand, there's the, the sand cans, or the, like the pneumatic trailers where uh, you've got a, a big blower, a big compressor thing in the back of your truck and it builds up here and it blows, blows out the sand out the back. We had the sand boxes where they fill a box, you sit it, you take the empty one off, you go get we get an empty one, you fill it up and then you take that full one off and put another empty one off and they store that on the site. And then there's these other ones, Sand Revolution, I see them everywhere, but um, don't know much about them. They, they're like belly dump sand trailers, if you like. But I'd probably go back and do a sandbox with the guys that I worked first before because um, better the devil you know, and they're no devils, but it's better to, I like to you know, stick with that and they were good with us and you know, decent guys, I like working with them so uh, there are people there throwing money it uh, looks like to go work for them and you know, who knows how that works out, you know, uh, I don't need to go in courses to uh, work for these guys that were already working for, they just said just show up, go to work because we've already done everything you know, so if you go to work for somebody else they want to put you in a course to tell you something that you already know put you through an exam that you've already taken, you know, so we'll probably go with the existing carrier that we went with the last time, but it's got to happen, it really has. Um, the rates are coming up, as I said, they're busy, looks like. I'll be regretting making this video here because I made one at the start of last year called Frack Boom 2020, <laughs> and then the thing happened in the world and nobody needed oil. I didn't know that though. Huh? How could you have that known that in January last year? February maybe. Uh, but a year on, I'm ready to stick my toe in the water and have a go at it because yeah, it's kind of the last frontier, isn't it? Oil field. It's, uh, remember up North Dakota, it was definitely the last frontier up there. Um, but I'm too old for the call, as they say. Uh, that just was bitter metal would break because it was too cold, you know. I did it in the winter time um, and I got out of there in the spring but they had this rule that you can't be hauling, you, you have to haul half loads because the frost has come out of the ground and they want to protect the roads and stuff and, it, and then I, I saw guys up there doing it on friends I had that sent me pictures of their trucks having to put chains on to get through the mud and stuff and I thought, hey, ah, no, you're alright. Uh, I do like Texas. Texas is nice. Texas people. Uh, the oil field's a bit, eh, industrial part of Texas. We drove through a little town coming up here uh, last time called Fredericksburg. It's supposed to be the nicest little town in Texas, but um, yeah, I like it down there, so watch this space. I'll probably stick a bit on in Andrews if we get down there early enough and it's still daylight. Um, but, yeah, oil field. I believe it's a coming. Young Wes, he's keen for it. He's up for it. He's mad to go. Uh, we'll have a good time down there. We'll blow the doors off, as they say. <laughs> Speak to you in a minute. Alright, so I didn't get a chance to go uh, into Andrews there, we had some truck issues on the way through and I had to take the express road straight through La Mesa without stopping. Transmission issues, couldn't get into low range so I didn't want to stop. However, a couple of people have messaged me uh, asking me about uh, who to go to work for down there in the oil field. Um, all I'll say is keep your wits about you, I don't want to recommend places that um, to go and uh, it doesn't work out for you. Um, if you look at some of our earlier videos uh, and some of them with uh, where we were working in the sand, the names are on the side of the truck. We did work for one company, they were decent folk, and we worked for another company, they were decent folk. There are some, sh make sure, I'll tell you how this works, okay? Uh, keep your wits about you, make sure you get a good percentage. 
if you're going to lease on to somebody, make sure they're not charging your fortune to use their fuel cards or to use their authority, okay? Um, uh, the way it works, and I don't know about pneumatic or anything like that, but the way it works with the sandboxes, uh, US Silica, from what I understand, it may be wrong, but I don't think I am, uh, US Silica own Sandbox, okay? And Sandbox is a company that services the oil wells. In order to make a frack happen, you need water, sand, and some chemicals. All right, so the water doesn't get trucked in like it does in North Dakota. It goes, it's piped into the big, massive outside ponds that they build, and then they pipe it from those ponds after they've sucked out the ground, I think. And they pipe it into the into the frack pad, the well pad, and they store some of it on there in tanks. Uh, the sand is hauled in. Used to be they'd have big containers and bring in pneumatic, but Sandbox come up with a system where uh, you can check back in some of my videos and you'll see it, but it's a, a box, like a shipping container that goes in the back of your truck. The frame, the, the, the trailer is just like a skeleton trailer, no bed on it, just designed to carry sandboxes. So you have one of those on your trailer at all times, you'll uh, go to a sand place, uh, like US Silica's sites, they'll fill your box up to the top, you'll drive into a, a place where they fill it from the top, and then you put the lid, they, they'll, some of them, most of them close the lid for you. You drive to your uh, drop-off point, they take the full box off, sit it on their pad, put an empty one back on you, and you'll get that load. That's the simplest way to do it. So, Sandbox are the company that's contracted to the fracking company, or the oil company. They are the main contractor to supply sand. And then they have got some subcontractors, um, uh, there are various ones out there. There's J.W. Parker, Four Faith, Covenant. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones that are, that are out there. But there's maybe 10 of them that are working for Sandbox. And what they are is the main contractor. They take the work from them. Then they get owner operators and third party people like me uh, to go work for them. Now, some of these guys have got their own authority uh, where you can take your truck, you go buy a truck, you can use their insurance, their authority, their fuel permits, their plates, they'll put everything on your truck. You drive for them, you maintain your truck, and they'll take a percentage from you. It's a higher percentage than it would be if you had your own authority. If you have your own authority and go to work for them, you get a higher percentage. The other advantage of that is that if it doesn't work out in the oil field, you can just take your truck, go do something else. Give them notice, say, hey, you haven't got any work, I need to go do something that pays, I'd be glad to come back when it's busy. Away you go, work for somebody else. Uh, or go do something over the road. Uh, however, if you're leased onto them and they've got their plates and their insurance, it just becomes a lot more entangled if it goes quiet, all right? Uh, also, uh, make sure that if you can avoid it, uh, try not to work for somebody, this is only my personal thought, but I try not to work for somebody that was working for somebody that was working for somebody that's working for somebody that's working for somebody. And by the time you're getting your bite at the cherry, um, it's a smaller percentage, you know? People, generally the, the wages there are 25% of what the truck grosses that's what i paid i like to pay good to these guys because you, you got to take care of their your staff um but if you p people offer 28 percent but that might be 28 percent of what the truck gets after the main leasing company has had their cut so just be keep, keep your wits about you uh, go on to craigslist some of them on there, uh, 1845 is another one, uh, Cisco is another one. There's a lot of good big companies out there that you should go work for. But uh, have a look in Craigslist. Uh, some of them are offering sign-on bonuses, uh, claiming the rates are high, they're 
some of them are claiming that their trucks are doing between nine and 12,000 a week gross. You be careful with the gross because uh, gross can mean one thing to somebody and then something else to somebody else. Uh, gross should mean to me uh, there are various ways to use the gross thing. Um, people will say, right, okay, the, the truck's going to gross 10 grand. Well, is that what the truck's getting? The truck will never see 10 grand if it's grossing 10 grand, usually, because that's what the company is saying that you're, the company that's leased it to Sandbox is going to pay you 10 grand, right? But then they take their 20% off and you've got eight, right? So you're really not grossing 10, you're grossing eight, but they like to tell you that you're grossing 10 because yeah, it looks better when people come work for them. So just watch what you're doing. Uh, the only trouble with that is when you pay your drivers 25%, they're expecting to be paid 25% of what the truck really majorly grosses, you know, the 10 grand. So two and a half grand will go to the driver and you're only getting eight. So you're paying your driver uh, two and a half thousand out of eight, which is a whole lot more. Uh, it's 500 more than 20% of eight. So, all right, bear these things in mind when you go. Watch out for high insurance. Watch out for people that are gonna charge you 5% of your gross revenue just for the privilege of using their fuel card that they're getting a discount on. I've come across that down there and it wasn't very pleasant. Um, but at the time, we just started and we added trucks and we had a couple of breakdowns and anyway, you get empty spots, don't you? So as quick as I get away from that, I did and got my own fuel cards. Um, I thought it was 5% of increase on top of the fuel that you spent. You know, so if you did 10 grand and you spent two grand in fuel, they're going to charge you an extra 5% of that two grand, but it turns out that no, it was 5% of the 10 grand. So just watch out for it. You will get your butt felt on it. You know, every chance uh, you'll make a mistake and go in there. But if uh, if you go in and look for the right companies uh, and work for them, if it's busy, you, you'll do great. Um, be careful with the lease roads. There's not a lot of lease roads that are bad in Texas. Uh, it's not like North Dakota where you can ride in a lease road for 30 mile uh, or what I believe are here in South Texas. Uh, generally, there's not a lot of off-road time, uh, but everybody's flat out everywhere. Two lane roads in Texas are 75 mile an hour speed limit and uh, this old yellow thing does, she'll do 74 on the cruise and over 80 and I don't remember being in the cruise much. so. But when the frack comes on and you're running hard, it's uh, it's exciting to go out there and make two and a half grand in a day. Uh, when I went down there at first, you could do that. Um, I don't think that's the case yet, but I believe there are increases have happened already. We've been offered more money to go back than we were getting when we left. So that's about it. Uh, I hope this is some information for you, but we'll be there. We'll have at least two, maybe three trucks down there. We'll probably take the this yellow one. Uh, the blue Kenworth's getting the engine done on it at the minute and the old white girl will be down there, probably. But uh, that's about it. See you in Texas, okay?